Welcome to another video um, from Rail 150. Um, this is just a second video which I've made and it's showing some of the progress that we've uh, managed to put on the model railway since last time. Um, the girls who have been helping my daughters, they've managed to complete or almost complete the, um, the scene here which will be like a countryside scene looking at a hillside coming down to the model rail to the railway track. Again, we've used the trusty uh, papier-mâché in absence of plaster bandage at the moment. Um, and also we had lots of paper left over after Christmas, lots of newspaper and flour from cakes and various other things. I thought it would be interesting to see if we could achieve similar success on the other side of the railway line with the um, embankment which I showed you last time. Uh, and uh, obviously it's not finished yet. Uh, there's still some work to be done, there's some static grass to be put on, but it has been painted and we are going to make some of the cliff areas try to look a bit more like cliffs. I don't really know how I'm going to do this yet, uh, but we will, I'll come up with some ideas and maybe if anybody watches this and has some comments or some experience they can offer, that would be brilliant. But um, I think in some people I've seen have used bark off a tree, a old, uh, old bark, because uh, it's very weathered, has a similar shade to rock. So I went and got some in a local park nearby. I uh, didn't pick it off the tree, but we managed to find quite a lot of um, on deadfall. So I'm going to take a look to see if we can use that. The top here, you've got some of the newspaper that we that comes over from the back, and I'll show you that now. And what we've done, in absence of using plywood, um, we've used papier-mâché to do the back. And I think it works pretty well. It's drying at the moment, but papier-mâché actually goes extremely solid and in absence of anybody really crashing into this it should be okay and what I'll do is paint it um, and it adds kind of when it's painted it adds some kind of depth to people who are coming in to see the model railway because this actually faces the door so it actually starts giving some aspect straight away so what I did to accommodate the the fourth radius curve is to extend out like I said I would do um, and that seems to be okay there may be some problems with clearance just here and I might have just just cut that down but I cut this area down and with papier mache it's so easy to repair you just get some flour mix it with some water cut some newspaper up and it's on so um, one thing I did decide to do is to change the aspect of the track and the way it's um, this fourth radius curve came around here and the reason for that is because it was a fourth radius curve, it was going to go a long way over into the into the baseboard here. And I want to I want to put a town scene down here, representing a an exit from um, Shildon Works that as it appeared in 1975. So I want to use this whole backboard rather for that. As I've said, it's not going to be uh, prototypical, it's going to be, it's, this is mainly being done for fun and has to have playability as well. So it has to be fun for kids to, to use. So we won't be going too serious, but there's one area where I'd like to get quite accurate. So I'm going to try to model that in that particular area. And if I had a railway line coming straight across, it wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is to bring the railway line down here to meet up with the railway line there and you can just see this a scale scenes uh, large station there um so it's going to go around into this area into this area here my goodness what a mess you make when you start uh, working away but what we've done to accommodate this scene is that we're going to put uh, some papier mache on so we're going to show you uh, video the development of just this small area here just this small area with papier mache so people get an idea of the effectiveness um, and how it can be used. So what we've got, um, this is an old pallet that I had. Um, I've, I've run out of plywood. I haven't got a car at the moment, so I have to have plywood sent in the post and it's quite expensive. Um, so I ordered all the other sheets, which uh, came to about 150, or 170 euros rather, with delivery. I don't want to spend 20 euros just getting another sheet delivered. I had an old pallet, I've cut it up. If it doesn't work, I'll get some plywood. But for this, um, what I've done is just literally cut a piece of pl uh, pallet, fitted it into, into shape here. This area I'll tackle later, I'm not really concerned about that at the moment. Many things I can do there. But we're just going to use 
um, paper to make the papier mache scene. So um, what we're going to do, I'm going to film us putting rolled up pieces of paper. This is quite firm paper. It's from pack uh, some packaging actually from Hatton's. So yeah, making use of the stuff that they're sent through. Um, recycling, reusing. So we're going to crunch this up into the small balls, pack it in. Um, and the great thing about paper is that it gives a very uh, um, like uneven approach, just like you would in nature. So well, I'm going to film that taking place. So my daughter now is just crunching up paper and putting it in into the scene. So what she's going to try to do is to pack it into, um, into the back wall here, into the back area. And that gives a little bit more firmness and I've screwed on a piece of wood to the, to the back here to, to give it something to brace against. So just that line which we roughly scratched in, um, it leaves enough clearance for the track. We're just going to pack some paper in and I'll come back in a second and show you what we've done. Magic ingredient of papier-mâché, flour and uh, water, 50-50. Sometimes uh, you can put a little bit more flour in, a tiny, not too much, but a little bit more just to give it a bit more firmness. It, uh, I think the starch in it makes it a little bit stronger. So that's, we just got a little bit there. We don't need too much and we're just mixing the flour and the water together. So looking, um, looking at this area here, what we've done is pack the newspaper in. Um, in some areas, you, instead of using balls of newspaper, you can roll it up into like a sausage shape, a bit like here, and that gives you a little bit more control over length, uh, over long areas. So here, for instance, I don't want it going onto the track and I don't want balls rolling down. It just makes it a bit more manageable. But that's about it, really. Um, it needs a little bit more here, and that'll be our last piece. Then what we're gonna do is to put, uh, tear some strips of newspaper and start layering it on. So here's our strips of newspaper. Um, this is not the Sunday Times. Uh, we better if it was. It's not the best quality, a bit thin. Uh, it does have a tendency, it's just a free paper which comes in the post in Germany. Um, what, uh, you, what you find is if it's a bit too cheap, that it, if the, uh, it'll soak into the flour um, and then it'll start falling apart in the flour and water mix. So we have to be very, very quick getting it, getting it in, uh, mixing it up. So we're gonna stick it in here. Just put it on one side, put it on the other side, make sure it's all covered. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. Take off the excess. And then layer it on. I'll move the bowl over to the area working. Layer it on and then just ease it in. And you'll find that you probably need about three or four sheets um, on there. So here, for instance, it's gonna sit on top of the newspaper. It soaks in th into the newspaper underneath. And we'll also attach it to the top of the board using a, a couple of strips as well, just like we've done here. And if I ever need to take it off, I just get a sharp knife, just cut straight across and, the, and the, take the board out. But I'm gonna try to have this as a removable scene um, just in case I need to move the tables, hopefully not in the not quite, not not in the near future. But if it ever needs to be moved, it should be quite easy to quite easy to achieve. All right. So what we're going to do? I'll pause the video now, and I'll come back when we put a lot more strips on. We can see how it looks. So that's um, pretty much it. What we do is to put some strips of paper going along this way, so kind of going along thin strips, and then like. Um, a cross hatch, you can make it a bit stronger by putting some other strips going this way as well, and it helps tie it together. There are some imperfections, that's fine, that's okay, you know, nature is never perfect. And what we can do is to put another strip down there just to hide any bits and pieces. Now what I have got here is a bit of an overhang, which I'm not really keen to have. So I can just push the paper back, and it's still quite easy to manipulate it, and, you know, move it where you, want it, where you want it to go for quite a long time you know, after it's uh, been applied. If, for instance, you have a dry section um, like this, and it hasn't really adhered, it can soak through from underneath, but if it needs a little bit more, get your hands in there, get your fingers into the papier-mâché, just push it in. 
until it starts to look a little, like a little bit wet. I mean, at the moment, looks a, looks a mess. Um, you know, it looks very untidy, looks very wet, but it takes no time to dry. But I would say, don't get it too wet because if it stays wet for too long, there's a chance that you might get mold on it. So if it is possible to dry it quite quickly, uh, this is a reasonably warm room. You know, if it's in a, a cold attic, you might have a problem. You might want to put a heater near it, but here the room is about 20 degrees. That's fine. It's going to dry it off, no problem. So give it two days. This will be dry enough to paint. Two, maybe three days, but for a small section like this, probably just two days, and we can paint it. Just painted an earthy colour. I've run out of brown. Most I've got too, a bit too much green at the moment, so I might get some brown acrylic paint, mix it with a bit of water, and get it on there. And I'll show you that at stage once it's done. Okay, but I'll put this video onto YouTube just as a small how-to. Um, and then I will put the follow-up of how we get the scene to look afterwards. So that's the finished product. It'll blend quite nicely into this section here. What I want to do is to put a wall across here, just print out a scale scenes wall. Um, and then put some kind of line side hut area down here. The track is going to go straight across this board here. I was thinking of building a bridge there. I haven't got time. Uh, I'm just using some Christmas holidays to do this. Uh, I don't want to spend ages building a bridge. I'd like to get the thing running. These children want to play with it. So I'll just run straight across there. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll paint it in a couple of days. We'll get some... Uh, I haven't got any foliage at the moment, but we have got some grass. We'll put a small sprinkling of grass on there. Still waiting for the static grass applicator. Might make one, don't know yet, but for just for the moment uh, we'll sprinkle some grass on once it's dry and painted. Okay, thanks for watching.